Remember me? Got a new camera and all sorts of breath. What's up YouTube? It's the most inconsistent YouTuber of all time. How to. I'm back, who knows how long for. Not gonna make any promises, not gonna make any apologies. Hey, let's go through where, I, where we left off. So, I left you halfway through my prep. I did go through with my show. I went through with one of my shows. So there was The Worlds. The Worlds in Vegas didn't happen. Um, I had to keep prepping through that. That was supposed to be in August. But I went all the way through that and did the O2 show in London, the European Pro-Am show. So I was competing as a fitness model in the pro division. Uh, let's get straight into it. Let's get straight into the analysis. Okay, so I was first out. I hate being first out, man, because you've got to set the tone. I prefer being towards the end. Okay, so at the show, I weren't really as full as I hoped to be. Um, I was really catching up from the morning. I was quite flat in the morning. Um, happy though, you can definitely see the difference in size from my last show. I was still the lightest guy in the lineup. Um, I was quite happy with my initial posing. This routine is the most sort of important, the first impressions. I really like that look, that made me look quite aesthetic, which I generally ain't, but hey, work with what you're given. Over to some amateur footage, this is what my sister took from the crowd. Really like that pose, I think that is my pose. I look a bit fuller and harder there. Pretty happy with the back because that was my weak point in previous shows. Had to fuck about with the lighting on this shot because the guy who recorded this, my corner was really blacked out. I don't know, maybe he didn't like me. Jeff, fix up your lighting, bro. Yeah, so you can really see the size difference here with me compared to the other pros. I think that's a good, that's a good pose for me. That sort of quarter turn to the left is a really good pose for me. The other side, not so much. So you know, I was up against it with some really good pros. They're all. They're all pretty much bigger than me. Um, my legs could hang. Upper body is again where I need to need to add mass. That's not a good pose for me. That side there. I need to add some thickness from the side. But yeah, there you go. That's probably my best pose there. And he pans away. Cheers. Yeah, so he came first. That's uh, Javat. He's from my motherland, North Cyprus. I thought Jock had a great physique, guy who's just going that shot. Jamie looking good as always. Um, yeah, so that was the initial three quarter turns. There was a second group of pro fitness models as well coming out. So you'll see there's a big lineup in the next shot. But yeah, man, I was up against it. Um, as you know, the WBFF is untested and I maybe foolishly in some people's eyes and drug free uh, so maybe it's stupid but I just like the way the WBFF shows are run I like the production values and I like the way they let you kind of do your own thing they let your personality come out on stage um, I just wasn't full enough man look at the you can really see here this is this puts it into some perspective so I'm standing right in the middle of first and second place. So Williams Fallard came second, former champion, and Javat to my right came uh, came first. Michael Gonzalez looked awesome. That's the best I've seen Michael there. But yeah, man, I need to make the abs pop a little bit more. But do you know what? I added four to five pounds onto my stage weight in a year and a half off season. So I'm really happy with that, man. I'm really happy with what I achieved. Um, and it, do you know what, for me, I beat my previous best, um, not a good shot of me, totally relaxed there, <laughs> again, camera pans on me when I'm not looking my best, cheers. But yeah, I was the lightest guy on stage, however, I did add four to five pounds onto my stage weight, um, and it was a good prep, man, like, 
that's it that was the highlights of the pro show so 14th of november six months on and i'm just getting back to you guys that's a that's how good i am at making these videos so yeah overall my prep analysis i um i did good man i enjoyed it it was such an enjoyable prep it was about 40 weeks long um because of how fat as fuck i was picture will be shown somewhere um but yeah, so halfway through, my, I had to have leg surgery on both legs. And um, it was something I've been waiting for for a while. So when it came, I really had to take the operation. I couldn't really postpone it. Um, had two varicose veins stripped out of me. So I couldn't go to the gym properly for a good two week or two. And I couldn't train legs for a good month, month to five weeks. Um, I had sciatica halfway through the prep which lasted about eight weeks. So my legs, I'm surprised my legs came in as good as they did because my legs really didn't get much, much training. So what I'm um, going to do is I'm not going to touch this terrestrial. But yeah, it was a good prep, man. It was a good yeah. prep because my macros, the lowest my macros went were 200 carbs, 200 protein and 40 fats. Now compared with 2013 when it was 150 carbs, um, this was heaven. So can you believe how much I am in heaven? So I'm coming day and night. I, I was waiting for that, for that suffering to start and it never really did. In a way, I feel like that's a, that's a bad thing. I know that sounds stupid, but hear me out. I feel like if I had that suffering, I, would, I don't know, I just feel like if I had lower macros, I would have dug a little bit deeper. It just felt a bit too relaxed for me, you know? Um, but again, my whole, you might see the new brand, Lift and Live, um, in the corner of this video and in the intro. The positive spin on that is that if I can get down to a pro level physique and compete with the pros and I felt relaxed, why can't anyone else get in, get to 10% body fat? Why can't anyone else lift and live, basically? <laughs> As the motto says, you can get in great shape. Um, without killing yourself, without suffering so bad. I didn't suffer and I got to a pro level. Um, you know, maybe I needed to suffer a bit more, get my condition, get my condition, you know, etched even deeper. But for me, I don't think that was the problem. I think the problem was I wasn't, I didn't fill up enough um, going into the show. Because check this picture out. When I got home after I'd had food with my boys, um, I drank alcohol and just got loads of food, loads of carbs, loads of junk food in me. Look how full I look when I get home. I'm a lot fuller. Um, you'll see my quads, the differences in the quads. The quads look a lot more separated, striated. So I think for me, it wasn't even a conditioning problem as such. I think I could have etched away maybe a percent or two more fat, granted. But I think the main problem was I wasn't full enough. I think that was uh, evident on stage. But I, I hung with them, man. I'm proud of myself. And uh, competing for me, it doesn't define me. It's not something that I'm going to do every year. It's not something I do do every year. It's not something that I plan to do next year. It's something that I'll do maybe now. I see myself maybe competing in another three years. Because for me, I want to progress. I want to progress in the gym. I want to have fun in the gym. And when you're constantly in and out of competition, you're not progressing in the gym. Let's be real. Um, and if you are, you're going to need to take copious amount of drugs if you're competing every single year and want to improve so for me i'm happy with what i did i took a, I took two years off from competing year and a half off season before i went into prep maybe even a bit less and i put on four to five pounds of lean mass which is some good shit something to be proud of and i'm proud of it um, i know i wasn't great at documenting my journey but that was the end of it um, hopefully you can take some inspiration from it even if you don't want to compete, if you want to get in good shape, um, you hopefully this will show you it doesn't have to be suffering. It doesn't have to be a torment. Anyway, I'm rambling. Listen, I am back. Give me a like just to show that you're alive. Otherwise, I'm just talking to myself. So if you're alive, give me a like. Let me know you're about let me know this video has reached my subscribers 
got nearly 2,000. Leave me a comment in the comment section as well. Let me know you're alive, man. What are you up to? Tell me what you're up to. That's the question. What are you up to? What are your goals? What have you done this year? Can I help? Okay, peace out, bye.